is the state representative serving the 46th district, Kathy Schmaltz. Hi, Kathy. How you doing, Bart? I'm good. How are you? Good to see you, even good. though I see you at all the events, too. I yeah. was just going to say, good to see you again, because I see Kathy, you're at all the events. Right. <laughs> well, that's the best place to be. And, and you were just honored at the Night of Distinction with the Jamie McKibben Award, so congratulations again. Well deserved. Thank and you I know much. you say you're just doing your job, but you know, you have to do your job well, right? <laughs> <laughs> so well, thanks. Congratulations. We have a lot of great events. Uh, they just had the Black Excellence Awards, too. Of course, you talked about the Sportsman Club over there, but it's so nice when we have uh, different events to honor people who've done so much in our community. Mm -hmm. And it's so great to be at those events and talk to everybody. Yeah, and it's nice, too, that we have um, several things <laughs> happening at the same time. I know. I know. That's the problem with <laughs> yeah. it. But, but yeah, there were, we, are, we are so lucky to have so many great people here and just so many events that you have to pick and choose which ones to go to. Well, it's nice. To, I was uh, always glad to see you. Uh, you do spend a lot of time in the district. Uh, you have uh, coffee hours and you're at the events. You've made yourself, uh, I would say, very accessible um, to the I'd, community. I'd, yeah, I'd rather hang around with people than politicians <laughs> in the first place. But, but that's so important because that's where you find out what's important to people in your district and what they want you to work on. So it, it, you should be in your district talking to people. Well, last week the governor uh, unveiled her budget for the uh, upcoming fiscal year. And I was curious uh, what you thought about it. And I, I'll, I, I'll specifically ask about a couple things that um, she highlighted. Uh, one was a free community college uh, for everyone in uh, the state of Michigan. What do you think about that? Well, I think anything, it's $80.7 billion budget, so it's a big budget. I think anything we can do to help our kids in education, we really have to work on though teaching our kids how to read and write because we've, they've fallen behind since COVID and that's really important. But anything we could do to help our kids, whether it's college or getting them on a career path early is always good. The problem with some of these things is where's the money coming from? Mm -hmm. We have to look at that because we don't have the $9 billion surplus that we had last year. So it's important to find out, you know, where the money's going to come from. But there's some good things in there, yeah. Yeah, and that is a big contrast from last year to this year, the surplus. $9 billion last year, uh, half a billion this year. Uh, that's a big drop. It is a big drop. And there's good things in there, like the caregiver tax credit, rebate for electric vehicles, uh, free breakfast. Of course, nothing's free when they say free <laughs> breakfast and lunch for kids at free preschool. It is taxpayer money, so it's not anything that's free. Um, but they're all, there's a lot of good things in there, but we do need to make sure that we have the money to do that. That's so important. And one thing I don't understand is all our income taxes went up this year. So we, if we have all this money to put in all these other tax credits, why? was a small businesses and all of us Michigan residents, why are we now having to pay you know, more income tax? That, I don't quite understand that. But this will go, this was just before the uh, Senate and House Appropriations Committee, so now there'll be negotiations and bargaining mm -hmm. and we'll figure out where this ends up. Yeah, and I, I think the expectation is the, the way the budget uh, was proposed is not going to be the, uh, the final document. Right, right, it changes a lot. And, and right now, um, there's not a, a majority uh, in the House as there are two open seats. Do you expect that the, the, the body will um, be very effective in doing anything? Be you before mean because it's tied <laughs> and it's its own election year? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that could be trouble. We did um, actually pass a bipartisan bill. There's a lot of, all my bills are bipartisan, mm -hmm. by the way, so I don't see why we're not taking up all my bills. One of my bills, the first five are Democrats. So um, I make sure, my bills are all to help people, whether it's veterans, foster care kids, uh, you know, just, just really good bills to help people who really need help. We did pass a bill for paramedics and emergency medical technicians, where they, right now, they have a temporary license for 120 days. Well, now it's gonna be for a year, so they can continue working in the field mm -hmm. alongside somebody who's fully licensed as they continue their training, because we have a shortage of paramedics and EMTs too. So that was a bipartisan bill, and, mm -hmm. and that was passed. So we did do something. <laughs> um, uh, hopefully, I, you know, I have a highway naming bill coming up, so hopefully that one will go through <laughs> without any trouble. And it's Lieutenant Roosevelt, uh, Second Lieutenant Roosevelt Steiger. He was a Tuskegee Airman 
born in 1919, moved to Jackson in 1930. The students at the Heritage Center at Jackson College, they do what's called making the invisible visible. And they work on people who have really helped to shape Jackson, who are heroes, and they bring them back to life. So they did a lot of research on this. I have the booklet in my office. Mm -hmm. So Second Lieutenant Roosevelt Steiger, we're gonna be naming a highway after him by East Michigan, I'm on 27. So hopefully I will be able to introduce that this month during Black History Month and get that through. Cool, and you bring up a point that who knew we had a Tuskegee Airman in Jackson. I know, these students are great. Isaiah Brown did a bunch of work on this and he put this whole booklet together. And I keep reading through it because they did so much research. The students at the Heritage Center really work hard to look for these people and then do the research to find out everything about them. He did get a Purple Heart. He's still listed as missing in action because in 1944, he was on a bomber escort mission to Austria and his plane went down. So, oh, wow. yeah, but wonderful person. Yeah, and Diane Agee is doing a great job with the Heritage Center. And I talked to a couple of students Saturday night that are working on history projects. And it's a, really a great gift because they've uncovered a lot of, as you say. And they're all volunteer history. students too. Yeah. I mean, they give up their time to do this, which is uh, wonderful. All right, um, so besides um, the uh, education components, uh, economic development, also uh, a focus of the governor, more money or I guess reinforcing dollars for business retention and attraction and that's a lot of money. Is that a good use of the... It is. Well, it depends. We have to look more at the details on that. I know one thing that you're interested in, which we just had testimony on before our House Committee, was a multimedia um, bill that's coming up, the Jobs Act. And, you know, years ago we had this film credit Mm -hmm. a bill which really didn't do wonders for Michigan. Too much money went out of state. But this is very good. This is for people like you, production companies, and it's all focused on local. Local actors, local production companies, local everything. Mm -hmm. And they get a tax credit, but it has to be spent in Michigan, out of state. So we hope to, and, and this goes along with trying to keep people in our state, because we have so many people leaving the state in businesses. We have a lot of people in production companies who want to go into the film industry. And this is one way to keep these young people in our state if we attract more of these film industries from outside the state too, and give more money to production companies in the state. So that, I think it's a good thing. We're still trying to iron out and it's not what it was before. So many people say, oh no, we're going to give money away. No, that's not what, this is all local, local, local. And as we know, there's so many people in production companies and so many people who want to get into this business. So it's just an avenue and it's supposed to generate 300 to 500 million dollars a year. Not to mention when they come to down, you use gators, restaurants, hotels. Mm -hmm. And so it's a big boom. We're still working out the details, but, but hopefully that will be one way to kind of keep people in the state. In the uh, video of the Y groundbreaking where Congressman Wahlberg talked about earmarks and he's always been uh, anti uh, earmark, but Lately, I didn't think he you know, admitted as much. He's softened where he feels like if there's ways he can bring uh, government tax money back to the district uh, on worthy projects, he's going to do it. And right. he's helped the Y and I knew you as well. I think you share that, that same attitude. Yes, yes. And I was at the Y too. That was wonderful to see that happen. Like the Michigan Theater that we were redoing right now, it's great to walk in and see all the scaffolding around us finally going to be done and in May we'll have the opening there so that'll be really great but no it's important we have a lot of people and businesses leaving the state we are what we're doing now is not good we have to change our policy to keep people in this state especially our young people and to attract businesses and people from out of state to come here so what we're doing now is not working and we need to take a different approach also, you uh, had a guest of honor at the State of the State address by the governor. Who, who did you bring Yes, with I just brought a former teacher, one of my friends. Um, she came, and um, it, I think it's so important to bring people from your district that you wouldn't normally mm -hmm. think about bringing, whether it's a former teacher or police officer. Or, you know, just to, I think next year what I might do is just have a little contest to see who, who would like to come and maybe have an essay contest on that because I'd like to invite people who would never get a chance to do something like that. Great idea. Also in this past month, you honored uh, former state representative Clark Bisbee, right. who passed away last year. I know you knew Clark, and uh, for those 
uh, who remember he was a prominent businessman in Jackson and also uh, I think three t two or three term state representative. I, th I think it was it for six years, uh, Bisbee Travel. I've known, I knew Clark for a long time and it was great to honor him. He, he loved serving, he cared about people and it, he just, he loved going to work every day and wanting just to help people in our community and it was, it was very special to be able to present that resolution on the floor and that's a nice thing that the House does is when anybody dies or the Senate, they do a special resolution. And Katie Bisbee was there, his wife. Uh, so it, it was wonderful to, to recognize him and all that he did. Yeah, he was uh, very much a big part of Jackson. And really, was, he was just a super nice guy. I know. And I just saw him, you know, a few months before. Mm -hmm. And it was so great. I, I'm, I really cherish the moment that I got to see him because he passed away shortly after that. Well, thanks for your uh, honoring his memory, and thanks for uh, coming in today. Of course, and congratulations again on your honor. I'm sure more to come. Thanks, Scott. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Our uh, state representative uh, representing the 46th District, Kathy Schmaltz. Thanks, Brian.